Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline. I uh, actually had a video that I had already made and I did that video before I had a breast consultation the other day and I decided that I wanted to remake this video and add in a few things. I've got some stuff that I really want to go into as far as dating goes um, and some perspectives that are really interesting that I've kind of gotten into in that department. And then also um, transphobia, definitely going into some transphobia and some stuff I've experienced over the years. And, uh, and then of course medical stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start with um, medical. So I made the decision that I wanted to get breast augmentation done and it was, it's been a long time coming. I've been putting it off and putting it off. I have a deep fear of surgery. Um, I don't like anesthesia. I don't like the idea of not being in control. And, uh, and that bothers me a, a great deal. So I decided that, you know, I had two of my coworkers and I work at a medical aesthetics place. Um, and I work on one side that's a hair salon. And uh, two of my coworkers had both had breast augmentation done with this local woman who's very good. She's got, I'm not going to say any names because I'm not going to, you know, create. The thing is, I had a bit of an issue uh, with this thing. So now I know my post the other day that I had made was I had a great consultation, but the more I let it sink in and thought about it in the past week, it was actually quite problematic in a lot of ways um, because I am transgender. Um, so... I uh, spoke to both of my coworkers and I actually mentioned to people about six months ago, I said, you know, how do you think she'll be with trans women? Um, and they were like confused because like a lot of people, they're like, why would it be any different? You know, that's the way people feel a lot of times. Um, and they're like, why would it be any different? You know, why would it matter? And I was like, look, you know, I just, if someone's going to be working on me through surgery and I'm going under anesthesia, I want them to at least be on my side you know, like support trans women and the ideology behind it and who we are as women. And a lot of people don't get that. They don't understand. They think of it as cosmetic, you know, and that's the way even a lot of trans people see surgery and stuff is cosmetic as though you are getting something done because you are a man and you want to look like a woman, but you will never be a woman. And so that's like, that's the problematic mentality of the way things are going now in our society. And so you know, you have the people on one side that they believe it's all, you know, depends on how you feel and then your physical body, um, everyone else should just respect you regardless of uh, what's going on, you know, physically. Um, and then you have the other side that says, you know, you will never be a woman. It's never going to happen. You know, why don't you just pretend to be a helicopter, you know? So, <laughs> and so we have these two sides that are very different. And I believe that, because um, a lot of trans people don't even believe that they're real women they think that they could like imitate them but they're not really women and to me that's where i feel like the distinct between cross-dresser and trans woman comes into the picture but that's my personal opinion over you know almost 15 years of transitioning um and so okay so i you know booked this consultation and it was about five months ago uh that's how long she's booked up she's got great credentials she's actually quite phenomenal she went to a really well-known school she graduated at the top of her class and all of this information people i know have had work done by her so you know i thought you know what i'm gonna go in there and get this you know consultation done so I, when i booked it they said oh you need a year of therapy and you need this this and this and i was like well i've got all the paperwork i've been medically transitioning for what since 2008 and I was like, I'm pretty sure that this is who I am. And uh, so, you know, it was just this odd, you know, as soon as I said I was going to use health insurance to do this, uh, which I'm lucky to have anyway, most Americans don't have it. And so when I mentioned it, they were like, oh, okay, so you must be trans, you know. Um, so I waited all this time and I've waited patiently and I was going to go in and I didn't get any confirmation emails or a phone call saying, you know, you're going to be going into, I have this consultation, which was, you know, not free consultation. So I was like, okay, well, the night before I get a phone call and it's from the surgeon herself and where I live is the South. So everybody's just fucking retarded. No offense for the R word, but they are. So, uh, so that we'll just say they're backwards, you know? Um, so they, <clears throat> I get this call and she's telling me that, you know, we're not really doing those kinds of surgeries right now. And I was like, oh, you're not doing breast augmentation right now? And she was like, well, no, this, the hospitals aren't allowing us to do breast augmentation on trans people or any gender affirming surgeries. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, my client, uh, client's brother. So recently there was this, um, 
the uh, the hospital that's here where I live, they had a bunch of, uh, they believed that Tennessee, like all the rest of the southern states, were going to pass a law uh, that was going to uh, stop people from getting gender affirming surgery using health insurance. And it didn't happen. So they preemptively chose to do this. And then they realized that they had really, they canceled all the people's surgeries right before surgery. And uh, the AARP was going to like, they started getting all their attorneys ready because you can't do that. Uh, once the surgery is set up and it's technically not a law to stop them. So then I realized what they did. They were like, okay, well, we're going back to do it because they, they, were, they were about to file a bunch of lawsuits and everything was about to hit the fan. So um, this surgeon evidently didn't know that they had to take it back. And they said, you know, we are doing these surgeries. We are doing these things. And so she ended up um, trying to tell me that they weren't doing it. And I was like, really? Well, I thought they were. And she was like, oh, they're just making it look that way on paper. And then the day of, they'll just cancel it. And I was like, okay, well, that's weird. So then I said, well, you know what? She was like, do you want to still keep your consult? Do you want to go ahead and cancel it? And I was like, so she's calling to cancel the consult. She's trying to get out of it, basically. And I was like, that's so strange. So then I name dropped. And I didn't really want to do that because I feel that that's, you know, if I have to name drop, it means I shouldn't be getting the surgery done with this person anyway. Um, and I dropped a couple of people's names and they're well known in the community and she's worked on both of them. And when I dropped their names, it got really quiet. And she was like, quiet. And she was like, oh, well, I didn't know that you, you know, know them and I had worked on them. She was like, oh, well, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. And I was like, well, that's weird. I was like, that just seemed kind of strange. Like the whole tone shifted. And so I went in, I signed the paperwork. And when I went in the next day, I was walking down the hallway and it was so clear that everybody knew that the trans woman was coming in. And it was so clear that they've never worked on someone um, specifically in this, this surgeon's area, uh, department. And so I was walking down the, the hallway and everybody's like looking, you know, I was like, weird, weird energy. I was like, this is strange. So then I sat in there, of course, you know, you have to take off, you know, you get into a robe and stuff and they're going to be doing the measurements and everything for you. But so our assistant comes in, lays out all the implants and then she comes in and we start discussing this. And um, it was this strange, like you could see she was trying to be careful of her terminology. But then at the same time, I think they were fascinated by me because I'm just wearing flats. I'm barely wearing any makeup. Like I'm not dressed up ultra feminine because I don't really give a shit about that stuff anymore. I'm actually quite butch. And so they were very interested. Like, I think they were so weirded out that not to be like egotistical because it's not an ego thing, but I do pass. And the way I effortlessly pass and being comfortable in my skin and I'm not overly feminine, wearing lots of makeup and carrying a purse. I don't even carry a purse anymore. I, wear, I carry a wallet. And so they were, and you know, they were interested, like I could see they were trying to like process this, that I wasn't a man wearing a costume. And so then when, you know, I took off my top to do the measurements, she was like, oh my God, you have boobs. And I was like, yes, you know, I've had hormones for, you know, like 15 years, you know, or since 2008. And um, she was like, oh, well, okay. And I'm like, what did you think? It was just a costume, like most ignorant. And I was like, you're a surgeon, like you're a doctor, you know, you're supposed to know about trans people and you're supposed to believe in medicine and uh, therapists and psychologists and uh, the things that doctors have proven over many studies and surgery and cases. And it's so obvious that this person has catered to a very specific crowd of people, we'll just say very wealthy, well-known white people in the city I live in. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, so we do the measurements and you could just see like they were more fascinated than anything and that's fine. And at the end of the day, they probably needed me to come in there to see me and go, wow, okay, well, she's living just a regular, you know, very simple, normal life. And, um, and she's not trying to be anything she's not. And I think they were more fascinated by it. Um, and then at the end, you know, they, you know, we basically were talking about she wants to get it done. She wants to do the surgery. But it all boiled down to the fact that I had to name drop you know, uh, people in the city that are influential uh, that I'm friends with that I know. And I just felt so uncomfortable because of it. And I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. So I will actually be canceling uh, if they call me to say that they've got anything set up. I'm just going to say I'm not interested, you know, and I'm going to leave it very positive because what happens is, is that I could be like, you know, I didn't like that I had to name drop and say all the stuff. And I don't want to do that because then they'll be like, oh, you know, it's one of those crazy trans people that just, you know, is never happy with anything. Because I know they were thinking I was going to kick the door down when I walked in and, you know, be like, my pronouns are she and her and it's ma'am, you know, I know that that's what they were expecting. And I wasn't like that. 
And so, um, because I don't believe that other people, I don't need other people's approval in this world, including women, cis women. I don't need anyone's approval of who I am to be validated. I don't give a shit. I don't think that women are special. I don't think that men are special. I think we're just human beings. And this is a car that I'm driving. It's not who I am. It's a vehicle that I'll eventually get out of. And that is a very important thing to remember in this life is that we're all gonna fucking die and we're all gonna die and like, we could die right now. I could die, I could have a heart attack right now filming this video and die. And uh, so the thing is, is that we all want to seek this, that's my rabbit scratching by the way. Um, so we all wanna seek this, you know, validation somewhere and we think it's gonna come from somewhere outside of this. And to be honest, there is only one validation, it's this. Now, if it is something you need done that's going to make you feel better about yourself, do it. By all means, do it. Um, and that's where I was at when I went this breast augmentation. And of course, then I mentioned it to some people that I know, and they're like, we're going to do some hunting. We're going to go to trans surgeons. And I was like, I don't even know if I want the surgery anymore. Like, it, it's one of those things where I was like, is this just vanity or is this a necessity? And I started breaking it down and I started looking at myself and I was like, you know, I'm doing this a lot because I think that I'm going to do the surgery and be accepted romantically and loved. And I'm not talking about people loved by people like there's many creeps on here that try and randomly think I'm going to go on vacation with them or take road trips with them. I've had someone on my Instagram be like, you should come on a road trip with me. I'm like, what? I don't even know you. And then I have like people in here like, I love you. Like, you don't even fucking know me. Really, you don't know me. So um, they say all this stuff. And then when I like half of my opinions are against everything they believe on here, but they're so infatuated with me that they're blinded, you know. So then I'm like, well, who am I trying to fool here? You know, so uh, this is where I'm going to get into uh, dating and romance, and I'm going to discuss, you know, like how I how transphobia really affects. And I'm not going to really say women that date trans women because, to be honest, like most women will date a trans woman without without a problem. Um, it is cis men dating a trans woman that's the main issue in our society. Um, and the reason why is not that they don't want to be with you. It's not that. I mean. I've honestly never been on a date with someone and I've informed them that I'm trans and they didn't know before that has ever been like, oh, I'm not interested. They all are interested, but only in sex. They want to sleep with me. They want to go there like I'm into it, but they could never actually date me. And they know that if I require conversation, intelligence, um, and actual real chemistry to build up something that's very special, um, they know that they're not going to get into this thing. Um, and so like, for example, last summer I slept with this guy just for fun a few times and I had such intense chemistry with this guy and I can't seem to figure out recently I was thinking, I was like, why do I have such intense chemistry with this man? And I realized that it's because he is, um, he, he lives in a very conservative area. So, uh, and his family, his friends, he's all into big fitness. He's like a bodybuilder, all of the stuff that's in his world. If he dated me, he would have to give all of that up. He would never be allowed to date someone like me without sacrificing everything he has. And so when I hung out with him just for fun, it was just like hooking up and enjoying ourselves and whatever. When I first interacted with him, I realized that we are both on the same level. Um, and I believe that, you know, uh, as far as like my looks and aesthetics and the, the way I live and who I am, like I think him and I actually matched perfectly. Uh, especially with physical, we both work out the way we do, we're, you know, every, we have a lot going on uh, chemistry wise. Um, and it's very rare that I have that, especially in the area I live. And so we had a lot going on and I was so fascinated by how I lowered every wall and everything I had immediately. And it was because I realized that this guy, what I'm seeing when I'm with him is who he really is. And he knows that he cannot be with me. Um, so when he's with me, he's comfortable. He's being who he is. He's being who he authentically is. But none of his gym bro friends would hang out with him anymore because they'd all think he's gay. None of his family would accept him because they'd all think he's gay. Um, he would lose his job. He would lose opportunities in work because they would all think he's something's going on there. And like, you know, and now in our society, in our world, they believe that drag queens are trans people. They don't believe that there's a difference between me and drag queens. And so now these people, because they believe it's men in outfits, you know, so they believe that I'm a groomer, that I'm going to groom their children and molest their daughters in the bathrooms, and I'm going to do all this horrible shit. 
And that's what they believe. So if someone like that dated me, they're like, don't you bring that man around our children for Christmas and holidays. You just know because ignorance is bliss. They have no idea what they're talking about. They're absolutely stupid. <laughs> and, um, and so, and in capitalism, the end goal is like people do believe in capitalism that more money, the better. You make more money, you'll be happier. And so in this world, dating a trans woman is against that as well because you'll lose your um, footing. You'll lose your gain in this world if you date a trans person. Unless you have so much money, you could basically have a trans woman on the side and in public you can be with someone else, which a lot of trans women are into because they too are playing the capitalist game. They want to get all the surgeries. They want to go shopping. They want the $2 million apartment. They want to go do yoga and drink matcha and do all the shit and not have to work. Like that's what they want. And for me, that that's not who I am. I have absolutely no interest in that lifestyle. It does not grow my mind. It doesn't... It doesn't give me value to my life. And so I never fell for the rich man looking just to sleep with me to pay off my bills each month. I had zero interest in that. I still don't have any interest in it. Um, and so I feel sorry for a lot of the men. Like this guy, he authentically really likes me. And I know he does. And I really like him. He's got a girlfriend. And when I found out he had a girlfriend, I stopped talking to him immediately. I haven't, well, no, I haven't stopped talking to him. Sometimes we'll text, but I haven't slept with him and I'm not going to. And I feel really bad for him because, you know, his girlfriend's very religious. She's ultra Christian. She's got this whole world going on and she has no idea who she's dating. She has absolutely no clue. And that right there, so he is a victim of transphobia. And uh, I have taken the steps to be who I am and I've sacrificed the world that he cannot sacrifice to be me. And uh, it's really interesting. Um, another little interesting thing that I found from dating is that the older I'm getting and the more I transition, and especially the more people are comfortable with themselves, I'm starting to find out that a lot of people I've dated are trans. A lot of the men, I dated someone in California for three years. And recently I thought I'd just reach out to see how they're doing. We dated for a long time. And I found out that they're a full-time cross-dressing trans woman. They don't take medication. They're not actually uh, physically transitioning. They're just wearing women's clothing and living their life. And they seem very happy. But it's very jarring for me. Um, I even dated this one person very shortly because they were a southern gentleman, which is a huge red flag for me. Um, and I dated this person years ago. And uh, come to find out, they're, like, they were very conservative and awful. And I left them at a dinner table and <laughs> walked away. And, uh, and I come to find out that they're an ultra-conservative, right-wing, AR-15-carrying, Trump-supporting trans woman. And it was so freaky to see how this guy that was just trying to sleep with as many trans women as he could is now a trans woman. And I found that wild, you know, to, to think about. And so the pipeline of people wanting to fuck me to wanting to be me is really bizarre. <laughs> it's like fascinating at how like, so I feel like I need to, so I'm talking to someone now and I straight up told them, I was like, I'm just letting you know, if you're trans, you might as well just tell me. Like if you have gender dysphoria, if you're wanting to cross dress, if you want, just tell me, I'm not going to make fun of you. I'm not going to, you know, just be who you are. And that's the thing is like, I hate that people, because people do, they date me specifically because they feel that they can like have a peek into the world of a trans woman and maybe this is the journey for them and I'm just living a normal life and funny enough none of them end up living normal lives as trans women they're all very eccentric and doing very eccentric things and it's it's very sexually charged and um and they get a whole misconception of what a woman is you know and so I do believe that being cross-dresser is valid you could be whatever you are if you want to identify as a woman and you don't medically transition and you're just a cross-dresser by all means live your life that's your thing for me I'm not that I'm not a man that's just playing dress up like it's it's I'm never gonna get bottom surgery and I'm probably not gonna get top surgery especially after that consult I think it just put me way off of doing this thing because I don't trust myself in anyone's hands I don't trust people at all if you want to be honest and I also understand that this is just a car that I'm driving and it's gonna rot or it's gonna burn or something it's gonna dissolve in the end and it's not who I am my body is not who I am it's who's in here what you see is just something I've worked on and embellished and built up. And, and I do believe that I'm more of the feminine nature, feminine nature. And I believe that I am a woman. Um, but I think there's just a lot more to it. Um, and the times that I felt more, the most comfortable with myself is when I am, uh, you know, with a very heterosexual cis male. And uh, they treat me as though I'm authentically a woman. That is the most feminine and the most comfortable and validated I've ever felt in my life. The problem is, is that those people can't date people like us because they know they would have to sacrifice a lot to be with us. Um, and yeah, so that's my story for today. <laughs>
I hope you all enjoy all of that. It's been a few weeks of me processing and accumulating ideas and concepts and things to put out there. And I do believe that this is, um, in my life, I'm 38 now, I'm getting older and I'm starting to really understand. Um, and I do believe that there are a lot of young people that are, you know, playing with their gender and stuff. I just don't care about my gender anymore. I don't care about sexuality or gender or being trans or the LGBTQ community. I really, it's, um, I'm getting tired of, uh, everything. It's boring. <laughs> it's exhausting. It's tiring. And, uh, seeking validation from others is never going to be a successful path. It is a disaster of epic proportions. And so uh, you either have to just be yourself or you don't. And I watch people thinking that they can go in there and get steamrolled with surgery and come out and think that the world is suddenly gonna be like, oh, you're a woman now. No, you are already a woman. You just have to take the correct steps to just be yourself, be comfortable, be who you are. And that's, that's the journey that I hope I've done. I mean, everybody has their own path and they have their own choice and decisions, so. Anyway, I hope y'all are well. Happy New Year, by the way. 2023, it's been a long time coming, I guess. And uh, hopefully this year will be an even better one and everyone will be happy. And uh, I'm gonna be live streaming again. I'm actually gonna be playing Dark Souls, the original Dark Souls from the beginning, um, probably starting tomorrow, which is Thursday, uh, the 13th. Um, and hopefully I'm gonna upload this video tonight. So anyway, I hope y'all are well. I hope you had a great holiday and I will talk to y'all next time. Bye-bye. Give me your thoughts below.